This is episode 80 of our Road to Unicum, and today we look at the Emil 1. This is the tier 8 Swedish tank destroyer in World of Tanks, and it is a heavy autoloader. We're going to look at a pair of battles. First up is a tier 10 Westfield battle, and then we're going to look at a tier 9 cliff battle. I've been looking for an ideal heavy autoloader for a while, and I think the Swedish line has the highest promise, at least for me, and I originally grinded up to the AMX 50B, the French heavy autoloader line, but what I found super annoying about that tank is that the, tire, the turret is ginormous, so whenever you're firing on targets, the turret is exposed and it's very soft. I did grind up to the T57 heavy. It's popular uh, with some players and in pre-made context because it has such a compact burst, a really fast intro crimp clip reload as well as the 10 degrees of gun depression. I found the tank to be a little bit too sluggish for my um, preferences and also the turret is really annoying because it trolls both the driver as well as the people shooting at it. Now the important thing even though I am bottom tier is you want to leverage the fantastic really insanely good minus 12 degrees of gun depression on this tank. and. So I'm playing these ridges. If you're a heavy, even if you're a bottom tier, if you have a good turret, you really should be up here playing. What's crazy is this ridge is so steep that I have to come up and over it, even with the 12 degrees of gun depression, in order to fire down on those targets. Now, those guys made the mistake. You can push into town if you're, in my opinion, the top tier. You don't want to do it if you're bottom tier. There's too much of a risk of having the enemies come down and bully you, like our IS-7 is driven by a very competent player, and then I'm telling my team that that WZ120 is somewhere on the southeastern edge of town, right? So he's going to have crossfire. I need to watch my exposure. So if I'm too far to the southeast, to the uh, right where I was, where those big hardy divots are, I'm going to be at risk of getting, you know, shot on the side. And that's one thing about this tank. Um, it has super thin side hull armor, which can be easily overmatched. The front of the turret offers really good protection. It's around 245 millimeters of effective armor and above, which is really great for playing hull down situations. You know, I've had people say, well, you know, the Swedish heavy tanks are only really good for one thing, hull down. It's like, well, that's a darn good thing to have, you know, feather in your cap, a strong turret with that fantastic gun depression. One thing I did with that T95 earlier, you know, obviously I don't want to brawl frontally with him because his gun has a high enough penetration where even without premium ammo, he can punch to the face of my turret. So, you know, what I did is I um, backed down the hill, basically daring him to chase me, chase me. And if he does, then he's gonna put himself into the field of fire of those, you know, tank destroyers that are behind me over at E1. And that's really a big part of this game is, you know, I don't want to overexpose myself to their tanks that are on the side of the ridge. And at the same time, you know, if they're trying to shoot me, either only give them my turret face uh, or, you know, bait them, force them to come up high where you know some tanks like the T95 don't have meaningful gun depression. I think that tank has something like five or six degrees of gun depression, so he has to really come up and over the ridge in order to fire at me. And then what you saw earlier was, you know, when he started to move to my left, to the west, I was able to get a couple side shots on him. Now, if I had kill shots on the T95, I'd consider taking it, but this Fosh B is in a fantastic position for me to both track him and then fully unload my clip and finish him off. So it's always great to take out you know, a tank that's two tiers above you, especially one that had a load of health. And so obviously, you know, our team has one northwest and east big time. So this is pretty much a route, but this does showcase very well, you know, the, how well this tank plays in terms of, you know, the strengths hold down. And, you know, given that I have enough health that I'm not one shotable, I want to go ahead and cut a line toward that Ferdinand, which is going to be safe from fire, from direct fire. And we know that since our tanks have already crossed the bridge area over by the E and F ridge. I don't have to worry about people shooting me or spotting me from the east or shooting me as long as I stay close to the ridge, which my platoon mate Avalon is doing. So he's in the correct position. Now there are a couple things to note about the Emil one. Uh, the first thing is that the silver AP penetration of uh, 217 is a bit on the low side for a heavy, right? And that is paired up with the fact that the gun has atrocious gun handling. Right, and so if you're, you know, in let's say like the IS-3, right, which has you know higher uh, base penetration, even if you miss where you're aiming, the higher base penetration can allow you to punch through your opponent. But you know, in a battle like in a tank like this, where you have both poor gun handling and you know relatively low AP penetration for a heavy tank, right, it makes it tough because you have to take the time to aim in fully 
which means that increases your exposure. And granted, you know, like I said, the turret is really, really good for its tier, right? You will still get pen frontally with silver ammo by tanks of tier 9 and especially tier 10. Uh, but as long as you're not giving your opponents easy shots, you'll still block a fair amount of damage. Now, because this tank is so good hull down, you know, obviously the best place that I can go early in this match is the mid ridge around right where our T49 is. Now, the thing is, you know, given that it's a heavy, even though it's a smaller heavy in terms of physical size, it still has the limitations in terms of having a poor view range as well as poor camo. And then this is just a beautiful tracking shot there. Now, I didn't damage the LT432 with that shot that tracked him, but it didn't matter. It held him in place till he got beat up and then I was able to finish him off. Really huge kill to start off the match. That LT432 is the most dangerous tier eight, tier eight light tank because it's effectively a light tank that has medium level of armor, uh, but a super low profile, great camo, great mobility, the works. You know, I actually reviewed that tank with a battle on this particular map. Now, the main thing, what I want to try to get up here is get some side shots as these tanks are heading to the east, right? Because that means that I'm going to be firing, you know, even with the crappy 217 millimeters of silver AP penetration, firing on the side of heavies, that for the most part is going to be pretty easy. Part of the problem is, is that they have this T-54 who's in a good position, although he's a little bit too high on the ridge because he knows me and the standard beer here. And as a result, he's already lost more than half of his hit points. Now I'm at this, the point where, you know, this is a four shot autoloader and there's always the question, well, if you only have two, one or two shots left, when is the right time to hit the reload button? And I'm kind of hoping to get some shots in that T-54, but he's backed off. Uh, the, it does take, you know, quite a bit of time to reload the clip. And the other thing too, unfortunately with this tank is the intra clip reload is pretty slow it's like around three seconds right although you know given that this isn't like a light or medium tank autoloader because this has meaningful turret protection you can sit there and aim in and so i'm gonna have two shots here i'm gonna go ahead and snapshot that shot before i'm fully aimed even if it didn't land it's okay i would have waited for that second shot to get fully aimed in but i've taken a shell from their hudes right so that tank i'm clicking on the map and is most likely sniper position on both spawns of this map, you can either go to A5 for north spawn or to K5 from the south spawn. So I know where that Udez is. I just got to be careful and try to keep these rocks between us so that if I get spotted, uh, he doesn't have a shot on me. I mean, I could blind fire, but blind firing is really only worthwhile. You know, if you're a single shot tank, certainly for an autoloader, it's not a really efficient use uh, because of the stretches of downtime that you have. Now, on this KV4, uh, this is a bit of a problem. Our T32 is a little bit too far forward. You know, we're kind of getting in each other's way. And from a silver AP penetration, the only shot that I have that's really reliable if that KV-4 is hull down is the shot on its cupola. And the thing is, it's not even that particularly soft. It's just the weakest available place. And if my shell flies true and I get a, a average penetration roll that should go through his cupola like it just did. Alrighty, so having another long clip reload and you know one thing you can do during clip reloads is obviously minimize your exposure. There's no point in me going to a position where I can get shot or spotted. It's okay to sneak up like I am here when I know that my clip is almost reloaded and you're going to see me take a blind shot where that T26E5 just was. One of the, that, I think that second shell went in but I don't want to waste anymore because I can't see him. I do need to be careful because if I've pushed too close up here, remember, even though these are bushes here and they help with my camouflage, a heavy tank, even a small profile heavy like this, isn't going to win any kind of vision games, right? And I need to be careful. Now I'm leaning out because I can see based on where our alleys have the T49 and T26 E5 spotted that they're on the other side of the rock, so they're not going to spot me regardless. But I want to be careful with my hit points. You know, obviously in a battle like this, just looking at the situation, it's pretty close. Now we have won the eastern side of the map, which is great. The tough thing is that our tanks are going to be advancing toward that Udes, who's going to have the first shot advantage and probably multiple shots based on the, the value of his camo, right? And plus, as those tanks are, those heavies are crossing southwest, you can see one of them just got picked off by the T-49, who's a good position. And now I'm like sort of debating, like you can see it in the way that I'm driving, thinking, do I like flex a little bit southeast of where I am so that if the WZ-111 or 5120 spots the Udes, I can help provide some fire on him. And I decided to come down and help win this particular flank. So this T-54E1, the first shell misses, but he's really low. And I've got plenty of shells to finish him off. Okay, I popped my 
repair kit to repair my tracks because I want to go ahead and push down a pressure room. One thing to note is, you know, there's always going to be some risk if some tanks haven't been spotted for a while. So I snapshot that one that doesn't go through. So I take my time and I'm aiming down on his hull. So that makes it easy to penetrate. But you can, if you're in an autoloader and you know that you have shells to spare, it's okay to snapshot a shell in the hopes that that finishes off that target and you move on to something else. Now notice as I'm backing up from the hill here, the Pantera has caught me in a pretty bad position. I'm trying not to overexpose my sides and the frontal hull is I think about approximately 185 millimeters of effect of armor. It's not great, but it's it's not bad, right? It's not going to be an auto pen. And certainly I don't want to give him like my sides and make it too easy for him. And again, this, this is so interesting because even with that fantastic 12 degrees of gun depression, you can see uh, with this ridge between us, I'm having trouble. And so, you know, go ahead and move down here. And then as I back up, he hits me. Now, from this position right here, the only shot he really has is against my turret. And he's coming, you can see kind of because of the steepness of the hill, what I do is I come up and jam him to keep him only able to fire at the front of my turret. And you know, since he was firing AP, those are going to be bounces for the most part. I definitely, you know, the, the interesting thing about this this tank is this is the first autoloader. This comes from the tier 7 Leo, which is a medium tank, which if you guys are interested, I can cover it. I have some really, that tank I wasn't expecting to like. I actually grew to enjoy it immensely because of the 300 alpha that it has as a tier 7 medium. Granted, the gun handling isn't great with the high alpha gun, but the ability to play Beekaboom is pretty powerful on a mobile platform. And then you can see part of the issue here of having 270, 17 millimeters of, you know, penetration, like I'm having trouble finding a green area of his tank, even though I'm sitting above him on a ridge and firing down. Uh, but that's simply, you know, due to the poor silver AP penetration. Um, I will say the good news is that grinding through this tank, I didn't really love this tank. It was okay. Sometimes like games like this, it played very well. Um, overall, it, because of the gun handling and gun depression, I'm sorry, gun handling and low penetration, I didn't really enjoy it that much. But the Emil 2, the tier 9, is an upgrade at tier in pretty much every way. I will also be reviewing the French wheeled lines. I just started playing the AMD 178B. So videos on that line will be coming soon. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.